Presumably, they knew that such variables as consumer optimism were not as nicely measurable as humidity and that the perfect differential equations had not yet been written for the movement of politics and fashion. But few realized how fragile was the very process of modeling flows on computers, even when the data was reasonably trustworthy and the laws were purely physical, as in weather forecasting. Computer modeling had indeed succeeded in changing the weather business from an art to a science. The European Center's assessment suggested that the world saved billions of dollars each year from predictions that were statistically better than nothing. But beyond two or three days, the world's best forecast was speculative, and beyond six or seven, they were worthless. The butterfly effect was the reason. For small pieces of weather, and to a global forecast of small can mean thunderstorms and blizzards, any prediction deteriorates rapidly. Errors and uncertainties multiply, cascading upward through a chain of turbulent features, from dust, devils, and squalls, up to continent-sized eddies that only satellites can see. Even for experienced meteorologists, all this runs against intuition. One of Lorenz's oldest friends was Robert White, a fellow meteorologist at MIT, who later became head of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Lorenz told him about the butterfly effect and what he felt it meant for long-range prediction. White gave Van Neumann's answer. Prediction nothing, he said. This is weather control. His thought was that small modifications, well within human capability, could cause desired large-scale changes. Lorenz saw it differently. Yes, you could change the weather, you could make it do something different from what it would otherwise have done, but if you did, then you would never know what it would otherwise have done. It would be like giving an extra shuffle to an already well-shuffled pack of cards. You know it will change your luck, but you don't know whether for better or worse. Had he stopped with the butterfly effect, an image of predictability giving way to pure randomness, then Lorentz would have produced no more than a piece of very bad news. But Lorentz saw more than randomness embedded in his weather model. He saw a fine geometrical structure, order masquerading as randomness. He turned his attention more and more to the mathematics of systems that never found a steady state, systems that almost repeated themselves but never quite succeeded. Everyone knew that the weather was such a system, aperiodic, nature is full of others, animal populations that rise and fall almost regularly, epidemics that come and go on tantalizingly near regular schedules. To produce the rich repertoire of real earthly weather, the beautiful multiplicity of it, you could hardly wish for anything better than a butterfly effect. The butterfly effect acquired a technical name, sensitive dependence on initial conditions. And sensitive dependence on initial conditions was not an altogether new notion. It had a place in folklore. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. Now, in science, as in life, it is well known that a chain of events can have a, a point of crisis that could magnify small changes. Lorentz put weather aside and looked for even simpler ways to produce this complex behavior. He found one in a system of just three equations. They were non-linear, meaning that they expressed relationships that were not strictly proportional, linear relationships that can be captured with a straight line on a graph, Linear equations are solvable, which makes them suitable for textbooks. Linear systems have an important modular virtue. You can take them apart and put them together again. The pieces add up. Non-linear systems generally cannot be solved and cannot be added together. In fluid systems and mechanical systems, the non-linear terms tend to be the features that people want to leave out when they try to get a good, simple understanding. Friction, for example... Without friction, a simple linear equation expresses the amount of energy you need to accelerate a hockey puck. With friction, the relationship gets complicated because the amount of energy changes depending on how fast the puck is already moving. Non-linearity means that the act of playing the game has a way of changing the rules. Lorenz's system traced a strange distinctive shape, a kind of double spiral in three dimensions, like a butterfly with its two wings. The shape signaled pure disorder, since no point or pattern of points ever recurred. Yet it also signaled a new kind of order. Years later, 
physicists would give wistful looks when they talked about Lorenz's paper on those equations, that beautiful marvel of a paper, but then it was talked about as if it were an ancient scroll preserving secrets of eternity. In the thousands of articles that made up the technical literature of chaos, few were cited more often than deterministic, non-periodic flow. For years, no single object would inspire more illustrations, even motion pictures, than the mysterious curve depicted at the end, the double spiral that became known as the Lawrence Attractor. Revolution. The historian of science, Thomas Kuhn, describes a disturbing experiment conducted by a pair of psychologists in the 1940s. Subjects were given glimpses of playing cards, one at a time, and asked to name them. There was a trick, of course. A few of the cards were freakish. For example, a red six of spades or a black queen of diamonds. At high speed, the subject sailed smoothly along. Nothing could have been simpler. They didn't see the anomalies at all. Shown a red six of spades, they would sing out either six of hearts or six of spades. But when the cards were displayed for longer intervals, the subject started to hesitate. They became aware of a problem, but they were not sure what it was. A subject might say that he'd seen something odd, like a red border around a black heart. Eventually... As the pace was slowed even more, most subjects would catch on. They would see the wrong cards and make the mental shift necessary to play the game without error. Not everyone, though. A few suffered a sense of disorientation that brought real pain. I can't make that suit out, whatever it is, said one. It didn't even look like a card that time. I don't know what color it is now, or whether it's a spade or a heart. I, I'm not sure what a spade looks like. My God. Professional scientists, given brief, uncertain glimpses of nature's workings, are no less vulnerable to anguish and confusion when they come face to face with incongruity. And incongruity, when it changes the way a scientist sees, makes possible the most important advances, so Kuhn argues, and so the story of chaos suggests. Kuhn's notions of how scientists work and how revolutions occur drew as much hostility as admiration when he first published them in 1962, and the controversy has never ended. He pushed a sharp needle into the traditional view that science progresses by the accretion of knowledge, each discovery adding to the last, and that new theories emerge when new experimental facts require them. He deflated the view of science as an orderly process of asking questions and finding their answers. He emphasized a contrast between the bulk of what scientists do, working on legitimate, well-understood problems within their disciplines, and the exceptional, unorthodox work that create revolutions. Not by accident, he made scientists seem less than perfect rationalists. In Kuhn's scheme, normal science consists largely of mopping up operations. Experimentalists carry out modified versions of experiments that have been carried out many times before. Theorists add a brick here, reshape a cornice there, a, a wall of theory. It could hardly be otherwise. If all scientists had to begin from the beginning, questioning fundamental assumptions, they would be hard-pressed to reach the level of technical sophistication necessary to do useful work.